Hey guys, Atrox back with another Mortal Kombat video. So before we jump into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who liked and commented on the Katana episode. Like it means the world to me that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out. And like it, it takes a lot, especially because I work a full time job and I stream on the side too. So being able to make these videos and do all my research and just edit because I do all the editing myself. So like I can only put out a video a week for now. Eventually, I, I want to put out more, not daily, but like at least two two videos two to three videos a week so but for now we'll just we're just gonna keep at it with one video and i'm i'm super happy that you guys enjoyed the katana episode hopefully this episode you guys will enjoy too i put a lot more effort into this one to really um to really just make the best video i can for you guys because i want you guys to enjoy it and be entertained by the videos i'm making but without further ado thanks again and i'll see you guys in a second <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another chapter of Face Yourself. In this chapter, we'll be going over the blind swordsman Kenshi Takahashi. This is going to be the final chapter for the stress test characters, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. So, in this chapter, much like Katana chapter, we'll talk about the costume designs. Well, only this time, we're going to be talking about the Midway and the NRS era costumes. His, uh, we'll talk about his new special abilities. And then we'll actually be adding a new section into this chapter seen as uh, Su Shen is alive. I feel like it'd be fitting to talk about Kenshi's wife and Takeda's mother. And then finally, how has Kenshi changed since the previous timeline? We'll use character bios to properly give context to who Kenshi is and or was between both timelines. But without further stalling into your time, let's jump right into it. Kenshi has had a few different looks. Unlike Katana, they were actually pretty different. Well, besides MK9. It seems to be an updated version of the original Deadly Alliance one, but we'll jump into that later in the video. So we're clear, we'll be separating the two studio eras. The first Mortal Kombat game through Armageddon, and then is the Midway timeline. And then MK9 through MK1 so far is the new NRS timeline. So you can just see the differences in the outfits and how they've progressed over time and highlight just how much of a better job they've done in the, in the NRS era compared to the Midway era, in my humble opinion. It can kind of get complicated, but I'll try to explain it so it's not. But anyways, let's get right into the character designs. So in Deadly Alliance, Kenshi wears a black bodysuit with red accents. He also wears a sash across his chest, depicting a dragon and a black pauldron on his right shoulder. Attached to his belt is a, is a small satchel. He also wears red knee pads and black boots as well. His signature red bandana is worn across his eyes, this being because he's blind, so it helps dull his eyes, I, I think. This at the time was actually pretty awesome. I think he is the only handicap fighter they've introduced. Not that it's much of a handicap, considering the blade helps him to see. Moving on to MK Deception, well, Deception and Armageddon, it was the same outfit. I really liked the outfit, so I didn't mind it much, but uh, Kenshi wears a high collared gray rubber vest with kanji on it, and I tried to find out what those kanji le uh, meant, but I couldn't figure out anywhere on it, so if anybody knows, can you just put it in the comments below? I'd really appreciate it. So, and he also wears armored pants. In addition, he wears white knee pads and red pointed boots and uh, long armored gloves. Also, he has a signature red blindfold. This is going to be uh, the end of the Midway era, seeing as he was introduced so late into the game's timeline. So, we see Kenshi again after the soft reset. Mortal Kombat 9 starts the new NR, uh, NRS era, and <clears throat> it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the first uh, reset we see in Mortal Kombat. So Mortal Kombat is probably my favorite. Mortal Kombat 9 is probably my favorite one out of the NRS era. Kenshi design is a uh, based off the original, but with some minor tweaks as Kenshi dons a refined version of his original outfit. But now featuring glowing panels on the back of his hands, he also dons what looks like a light armor padding on his legs. His right boot has a dragon on it. I also like how the dragon glows when he appears before the match starts. I think it's a really cool touch. So we'll fast forward 25 years after the events of Mortal Kombat 9 and come to MKX where we see Kenshi again. He now sports a trench coat style outfit, which I think is extremely cool. Looked really badass in it. I always liked the design. It was a very dark red, heavily armored. Considering what he was up to hunting for Sushen's killer, I think this was a great touch. 
he also still has like some form of light padding on his legs albeit very uh, smaller compared to the mortal kombat 9 version i think it's a little weird but it is what it is also he's grown a full beard being on the hunt for dagon and the red dragon it makes sense he wouldn't care much about his his beard to be honest Kenshi didn't appear in Mortal Kombat 11. Well, in the crypt, he does apparently die, but uh, we don't talk about that because it's not canon. And instead, I believe the more logical answer is uh, he and uh, Takeda are off fighting the Red Dragon, like his story ending in uh, Mortal Kombat X indicated. So after Liu Kang resets the timeline, we meet the new Kenshi. I don't know what I can say other than like, I like both outfits like having a yakuza style kenshi in a suit looks super dope as hell like especially the the yakuza tats on his hand is just plain awesomeness and you can even see the little bit of the tattoo on uh, his other outfit as well i assume this will be his uh i assume the yakuza outfit will be his uh, alternative because in stress test outfit all i saw was the blindfolded uh, kenshi being played so i assume that the blindfolded one is the, is the main outfit Speaking of the um the blind swordsman look, man, I'm not gonna lie, Kenshi's new outfit looks so good. It looks crazy good. He's rocking a sleeveless trench coat style design. Like this is different from his trench coat from uh MKX. I think it looks a lot more badass. Also, he's rocking some type of body armor chest piece. Like it looks like some kind of like uh, uh um like you know one of those heater uh, the heater shirts that like you wear to like you know keep you warm. It looks it's, it looks like one of those, but it's like armored everywhere. He also has a lot of, of different types of metal designs throughout his uh, throughout his chest. Like he even has like a bunch on his arm, which I think is really cool. He has uh, some ribbons on his chest. I assume the 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 ribbons like they attach to his sword sheath, so it, it, it should it, it looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. His hands look like the same type of a Wolverine, like the same type of like plating, like on a Wolverine uh, costume. Maybe he has claws. That would be hilarious. But seriously, it's a really dope. His arm seems to have light armor padding as well. Considering he he detests Yakuza and he's trying to liberate his family, it makes sense that he has a lot more armor to help him deal with, you know, being ambushed by Yakuza man he he really can't catch a break like kenshi's always seems to be finding some sort of gain in mortal kombat whether it be the red dragon or the yakuza that about covers all the costumes for kenshi in both the midway and nrs eras okay guys so in this chapter we'll be going over kenshi's special abilities so the first of these abilities is going to be called ancestral guard Kenshi runs towards the opponent and slashes at the opponent. If you enhance it, he does a bit more damage, but you can also cancel the opponent. So being able to have these kind of type of mind games with Kenshi is going to make him quite the annoying character, especially when you consider that he has a puppet that this makes it even more annoying and pressured. <laughs> but anyways, moving on to the next ability. Soul Charge is back and pretty much does the same thing. If you enhance it, you get a bit more damage, which is nice to give you space. And like, you'll be able to push them away to just really give you time to regroup and just figure out what to do to deal with uh, Kenshi. So moving on to the, to the third ability is the Demon Drop. Demon Drop is also back and can be thrown anywhere on the map. And then when you enhance it, it can pop you up. I can only imagine all the different type of uh, combos you can do, especially with the cameos with this ability. It should be, it should be very fun to see. <laughs> then we're moving on to our next ability. The, f the next ability is going to be Rising Karma. It's also back and it's a pop up. And when you enhance it, it just does a bit more, a bit more damage. But like, if you see anything of like MK9, like that move could be very, very dangerous. So they also added a force pushback. Uh, it pushes the enemy back and now you can charge it and you can also enhance it for a bit more damage you can also enhance charge the ability which even makes it more devastating it's a good move to to really give you space from your opponent kenshi is gonna have a lot of like uh seems like you're gonna have a lot of uh, um range moves to like keep people away and then finally we have the central stance the central stance so there's a lot of different inputs for the M for for uh kenshi's uh central stance it looks a lot it's a lot to go over so instead of just going over each individual ability we'll just kind of give you a general sense of the ability this move is basically where kenshi and the spirit work together cohesively making him a very dangerous because you have to not only guard against kenshi but the spirit as well 
it makes it uh, extremely difficult to deal with. But when you hit Kenshi, regardless if he's blocking or not, I believe the spirit will go down. So just low, just low poke him or something like that, or just hit him on his guard and you'll be okay until he recasts the ability. That about covers it for the ability as uh, chapter. So in this chapter, we'll just go over the fact that Sushi is alive and what what kind of impact that could have on the Mortal Kombat 1 story. So I'm going to be honest, I've always wanted to know more about Kenshi's wife, Su Shen. There's so little to go on, but I wouldn't be mad if they decided to make her into a new character for Mortal Kombat 1. Her being alive in the new era means eventually we could see Takeda come back into the Mortal Kombat story at some point in the new era. Takeda was my favorite of the MKX cast, so I'm happy about that. I just hope Su Shen doesn't die in this timeline, but... I kind of wonder, without her desk, would we get a different version of Takeda? Probably, but these could still unfold the same way, but with a different series of events. We'll see when we get our hands on MK1. But the reason I brought her up is because of the little information we do have on her, she seems like just such a dope character. What is known is that she was a kind and devoted mother towards Takeda, whom she raised on her own since Kenshi did not know about the boy's existence until Sushen's unfortunate uh, death. I assume to protect her from the Takahashi bloodline, them being warriors, I feel like she just wanted uh, Takeda to have a normal life. But when Takeda was 8 years old, the Red Dragon came for them, and she gave her life to give him a chance to live. If she only had told uh, Kenshi about Takeda, she might have lived. It just kind of sucks, but I suppose it was necessary for Takeda and Kenshi to grow as characters. But according to the MKS comics, when Sushen learns the Red Dragon clan was coming for Takeda, Sushen comforted the boy before leaving him in another town over. When the three Red Dragon soldiers arrived, they demanded the whereabouts of Takeda. So instead, Sushen just threw her sword and killed all three of them with a single blow each. But it was killed herself when the last fired a handgun at her right as she killed him, the bullet tore through her chest, killing her instantly. Sushen, however, dies differently in Kenshi's Mortal Kombat X ending. They said Dagon killed her, not the Red Dragon thugs, but seeing as almost all endings are, aren't are canon, we'll go with the MKS comic since that's canon. I think her being alive in the new era can really make sense for her to be a character. She would be a new character because we've never seen her in the game. And I think it could make sense her using a sword to take down the four red dragons. And one strike could mean that she at least has some sort of martial arts training. I can see a world where Su Shen can become a playable character or at least cameo. I prefer as a main roster character if I'm being honest though. Maybe she could make it in as a DLC character to see how she would be received. I also like how her last words were kind of badass. With the red dragon says, are you the bitch with the Kenshi bastard? And Sushen goes, I'm the bitch with the blade. <laughs> like, that shit was fire. I'm not gonna lie when I first read that. I'm just like, that shit was dope. That's why, I, that's kind of why I want her to be a main character. But, you know, that's just my uh, fandom for uh, for Sushen. So I just wanted to quickly go over, like, why I think she could make it as a character. I do plan on making a video about Sushen, like, soon. We'll see how, how it goes. I'm just gonna try and get as much information as I can about Sushen. So I can give you guys, like, a whole video on her. Okay, so in this chapter, we'll just go over Kenshi to see if he's changed from the previous timeline or if he's still the same individual. <clears throat> so I guess we'll start with uh, Kenshi in Deadly Alliance since that's where we first introduced into him. So Kenshi is a swordsman with psychokinetic abilities who hates Shang Tsung because Shang tricked him under the name of Song. Kenshi was proud of his abilities and fell into Song's stories about a powerful blade that would befit a warrior like him. The only thing was that the sword was sealed in a well. Not knowing that the well housed his ancestor's soul, he was blinded by them after releasing them and was left to die. Shang reveals himself to, uh, to be the sorcerer and stole Kenshi's ancestor's souls to revitalize himself. However, one thing that wasn't a lie was that Sento did indeed exist. And now with the blade, he did become far more powerful, but at the cost of his eyesight. The bio also gives us a bunch of information on the state of Kenshi, but I'll just summarize uh, the important bits. Otherwise, it would take all day to try and read these game bios. 
We get a little more information in Kenshi's alternative bio. In Mortal Kombat Daily Alliance, saying that Shang found out about Kenshi's heritage of a long forgotten line of warrior kings and he wanted to consume them to revitalize himself. He got what he wanted and left a severely injured Kenshi to die in the process. So, based on the bios, it just seems like Kenshi didn't know about his own family or his heritage. I think that I find that very interesting. <laughs> So, through the sword, he felt the, his ancestors' cries of, for help and decided to ultimately join the special forces alongside Jax, Sonya, and Cyrex to kill Shang Tsung, who had escaped into Outworld. Kenshi wanted to free his ancestors, ancestors, ancestors and redeem himself. In Kenshi's battle and deception, we find out Kenshi almost died while fighting Mavado, which I think is just silly. I don't think Mavado's on Kenshi's level, but it is what it is. So Sub-Zero finds Kenshi and nurses him back to health after the events of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. And at some point, Shang Tsung has died during the Mortal Kombat Deception intro. The souls return to Sento. He didn't know how Shang died, but his quest had been completed nonetheless. So then he started looking for a way home. In uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, it says he was alone in the Botan jungle, stalking the Red Dragon Scouts. I was uh, overwhelmed by the intense psychic scream. I became aware of Taven and Dagon and their quest to slay the fire elemental blaze. My sword also heard the scream and pleaded with me to ally with the forces of light once more. I had received insight from my blade, but this time it seemed drawn to combat. It was as if I could feel the sword pulling me towards some epic clash. Nothing really new about his personality. His bio, unfortunately, is just basically describing the events of uh, Armageddon. That about covers the midway era of Kenshi's lore and personality. We didn't get get anything new uh, from Armageddon, but it's it's all good. But anyways, um, from what from what I got from uh, Kenshi from the all all through Armageddon was uh, he was a prideful warrior who only wanted to prove his strength, but was ultimately betrayed and left for dead because he trusted the wrong person. Luckily, he was able to survive the encounter and indeed become a stronger fighter for it. So fast forward 25 years later and we get to meet a much older and wiser Kenshi. In MKS we get to see him talk through the story and the intro showing us more of who Kenshi is as a, uh, as a character. He met and fell in love with a young Thai American woman named Su Shen. Eventually Kenshi departed but not before getting her pregnant unknowingly. Years later he learned that uh, Su Shen had been murdered leaving their 8 year old son who he didn't know existed in Kenshi's care. I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw that he left Kenshi, oh, he Kenshi left uh, Takeda with Scorpion in the comics. I was like, oh, he a dead be dead. But uh, then when he came back and explained that he was looking for the ones responsible for Shen's death, and that he found out it was the Red Dragon, I was like, okay, you a dead be dead that forced your son to become a ninja, but you did it so you guys could get revenge for Shen's death. So I guess I can let that slide for now. In uh, MK11, he was nowhere to be seen. But uh, going by MKS's ending, it's safe to say he was hunting for Dagon and the Red Dragon alongside Takeda, which is why when Scorpion asked where Takeda was, Jackie said it was classified. So I feel like that's the reason why he wasn't in MK11. So we don't get any new information on him until after Liu Kang rebooted the, the timeline. We get a little information from Kenshi's bio and intros, basically what he's doing at Johnny's mansion before he loses to Johnny. Okay, so in the bio, we get the backstory of the Takahashi's warrior clan, which is basically, uh, apparently his uh, family was decimated due to battle and lost everything, including the legendary sword Sento, and basically had to serve the Bakuto, whom were the predecessors of the Yakuza for protection. This, this is tough, especially for a once proud warrior tribe in the past timeline. Kenshi pers personal personally personality pretty much stays the same. Sorry, I couldn't say that word for some reason. Being raised in the Yakuza he, and hearing stories about the great warriors of his clan empowers Kenshi into wanting to liberate his his family from the Yakuza. One thing about the timeline is he actually knows about and is raised by the Takahashis. I never got the notion that his family knew about Sento or fighting in general or else he would have never... He would have known that sent who what Sento was, and he would have never been tricked by Shang Tsung by getting Sento back from uh, Johnny. He could inspire his once proud family to liberate themselves from the Yakuza. Man, Kenshi's MK1 story is gonna be just so awesome. I love how they flushed him out 
Him knowing about his family in this timeline and being raised by them, even if they do serve the Yakuza, their pride as a warrior clan has not diminished. <laughs> I can't wait to see Kenshi free his family and see what they do in the story when the clan finds out that the sword has been found and man, I'm not gonna lie, that shit's gonna be amazing. Kenshi has always had an interesting story since we were first introduced to him in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Glad to see his personality wasn't too different in this timeline from what we've seen. Although Liu Kang's mistake might have impacted the whole Mortal Kombat universe, Kenshi and his clan making them into Yakuza isn't the worst thing considering he's still the same per same person with the same personality, just under different circumstances. Do you guys think Kenshi has changed at all? I think he's the same person. He just had it in a part of the Yakuza for a short time. This has to be one of my favorite characters I've done out of the series. If you made it to the end, thanks a lot. I appreciate you. And leave any opinions about Kenshi in the comments section below. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel and if you enjoyed this Please leave any Mortal Kombat related suggestions that you'd like to see me talk about or even react to and remember guys friendships over fatalities Don't be a jerk